Hello friends, so in this video, I'll be doing an unboxing, review, and mini ASMR of the first ever mechanical keyboard I got, which is the RK855 mechanical keyboard. So I've been using this for about 2-3 to three months now, and I'll be sharing with you my thoughts about it. So this is how the package looked like when I received it. It includes a keyboard itself, of course, then a Type-C cord, which I think is used for both charging and connecting it to a desktop. It also came with a keycap puller or remover, and then lastly, it came in with like an instruction or warranty card or certificate. So that's it with the unboxing, now let's go right in with the review. So before anything else, just a disclaimer, I am not a reviewer and I'm not really knowledgeable when it comes to technical or mechanical stuff, so everything I say will just be based from an average student's perspective and my experience when it comes to the keyboard. The RK855 is a mechanical keyboard that has 68 keys. So this keyboard has had swappable switches and I got the one with a brown switch, which has a tactile bump. It has two modes for connecting the devices, first is the Bluetooth mode and then the wired. It can support up to 5 devices and it can easily be switched by pressing the combo F, N, plus Q, W, E, R, or T. It is rechargeable, which I like because it doesn't use batteries because those can really be costly. So it can be charged with a Type-C cord. For the price, I got this for 1,980 pesos in Shopee Philippines and I'll be putting the link on the description box below. So when it comes to design, it has an overall white color, the case is rectangular and sleek, and it's also white. It has a royal clutch logo on the front, and then with the keycaps, they're also white and they have a rounded, rectangular edges. The characters printed on the keycaps are also kind of transparent, so when you use it at night or in a dark place, you will be able to recognize the keys. The layout of the rows is not flat, they are layered or angled per row, and as you can see, the spacebar is slightly taller than the keys on the previous row, which I find useful because it'll be easier than to reach the spacebar with my thumb. For the backlight, this is how it will look like under different circumstances. Now for the light modes, this keyboard offers a lot of light modes but I do have to admit that I don't really use the other light modes and I just personally prefer just a stable backlight. During the day, the light modes really are not that noticeable so for this light mode test, I'll be showing to you how they will look like at night.
So for the type test, I'm not much of a fast typer but after trying out the keyboard, here's the type test result that I got. I'll be putting down the link of the type test site that I used in the description box below. So here's a comparison result with an average keyboard that I featured in my iPod unboxing video. So did I have any issues with it? Well, not really. It performs really well. There are no delays when I'm typing with it, even if it's just connected through Bluetooth. I also think that it's durable as I'm using it for about 2-3 months now and I haven't really had bad times while using it. So now to give you more insights, I will tell you guys what I like and dislike about this keyboard. So first off, I love that it has an aesthetically pleasing design. I love that it has white keys and a white light. I also love that it is small and it's compact, it doesn't have much dull spaces. The white light is also adjustable and have many modes and can be turned off. I also like how the keyboard sounds. It isn't that quiet nor that loud. It also connects fast and automatically within just seconds after opening it, which is very much of a time saver. I also like the fact that it can be connected up to 5 devices simultaneously, so I won't need to manually connect it to switch to other devices once I've set it up already in the first time. Now for the dislikes, I don't really have that much but I do find it kind of confusing that the layout is in Windows type of keyboard so the shortcuts for iPad, iOS, and other Apple devices can be kind of confusing sometimes. Second, I don't really like that it doesn't have a sensor or signal when the battery is fully charged already or not. Although it does have a red sensor indicating that it is charging, but I still wish that there is also another color that can indicate whether the battery is already low or it's fully charged. So for conclusion, do I recommend it? What are my final thoughts? Well, yes, I do recommend it, especially for office workers or students like me who do a lot of essays, digital notes, and other documents. I use it for doing the usual school tasks such as data processing apps like MS Word, searching through the web, and other stuff. I haven't used it for gaming actually as I do not really play any games, so I can only say that it's a good product for office or school work. It is very worth it considering its price as it performs really good compared to the other keyboards I've used before. So for a mechanical keyboard like this, I consider it very worthy. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys find it helpful and insightful somehow. Always take care guys, stay safe, live a healthy lifestyle, and thank you so much for watching. Love Sandra!